Hello and welcome along to another episode and what is probably the final week of this FM21 Builder Nation story from Bangor City with me Daniel. It's part 183 and today we are back for a, a nice warm up against Colwyn Bay in the Welsh Premier League before the return leg of our Inter Milan last 16 Champions League tie. If you don't know what happened in the first leg then do click in the eye above to see Friday's episode because you don't want any spoilers ahead of this one. It is make or break time in this series. As well as having wrapped up the league title already, we've also today got a contender for weirdest transfer of the save. And it happens after the January transfer window closed. So we'll go and focus on that in a minute too. But if you're looking forward to all of this, a big final week as we try and make history tonight against Inter, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily content from this series until we're done. And in FM22 just around the corner, we released our first plans for the new game at the weekend and you can find all the FM22 based stuff up in the eye above. And please do come and follow us over on Twitch as well as we're going to have daily live streams once the beta releases. I can't wait for that, I hope you're looking forward to it too. But in the meantime, we've got a bit to get through here with Bangor City, so let's go and crack on. We start by looking at the schedule for our two games off camera. The first, a 3-0 win against Barrytown United. To be honest, an early red card helped us. We were one up with Kean Bulkley, but Kavara scored from a resulting penalty and Tom Jones added a third off the bench late on. We won 6-2 against Airbus UK. Alexis Mikhail scored two goals there. Not the best finisher in the world, but got pace and seemed to cause us problems. Kavara, a Danny Gomez-Garcia hat-trick aided by a penalty at the end. Kyle Bulkley and Mubarak Whelan wrapped up our six goals there. And that means coming into this month we're in pretty good shape. Again, Kyle Bulkley's picked up a knock on the eve of the Champions League, but he should be back fit for midweek. We've got no one injured or suspended. So full reserves against Colwyn Bay, and then we hope for the miracle against Inter. Of course, you know now we're 3-1 down from the first leg. It's going to be a very important tie. And I don't think we've got it in us, but there's a small chance, so we have to hope. Let's also go and have a quick look at TNS, because they're soon to be in action in the Europa Conference League. And I don't know who they've drawn in the last 16. They won their group, and they will now be facing Olympiakos. Okay, so that's one of the two ties last episode that we indicated they might fancy the winner of. Olympiakos, not a great draw, of course, but certainly one of the best ones they could have got. Their key player, Moniudis, is not that much better than the TNS players. The question is, how many of them have they got? Quite a lot by the looks of it. But a key man was down there. Has got a knock. Seven days. Three days. And Christian use of two to four months. So they're being helped by injuries and the likes. It would be fair to say though. Olympiacos have got a better squad. Not a hugely better one. But overall they just edge it in most areas. So that will be a close tie. I hope TNS can produce a miracle. And reach a first quarter final. No other side has done that in this save. And TNS could be the ones to save us at the end. Which wouldn't be like them based on this series so far. Talking of TNS though, we've got to move on to the bit I said at the start. Weirdish transfer of the save. Now, let's go on to our transfers because it involves us and go to our history. Because you may remember, about a year or a year and a half ago, we bought in Ruben Bates from TNS. I couldn't understand why he was on the transfer list. It's happened a few times since. The likes of Ngar, who they sold on, who were in their best 11. And they put them on a transfer list and just didn't play them. But now, in mid-February, after doing nothing at all in a January transfer window, TNS came in and asked if they could loan Ruben Bates. Now, of course, we're obliging. We would do that for virtually anyone, unless they were our academy stars and in the first 11, because we want to improve the nation more than we want to improve our club. But it just seems strange to me that a player they transfer listed, a player they'd ignored and shunned, is now good enough to get in their first team, just because your likes of Bernardos have moved on. So Ruben Bates is back on loan to TNS for the season. I'm sure he's going to play for them. But it's just a very weird one and the timing seems a little off. I wanted to very quickly go and see if they had injuries which maybe explained it. Looking at centre midfield ahead of their Europa Conference tie. They've got nobody out. It's a really odd move. And again look. They've put their first choice right back on a transfer list. I don't get it. There is so much about the recruitment about the transfer market of TNS that I just don't understand. Even the playing A Tate on the right wing half the time. He's a star player. He's a superstar. Good enough to get into our squad next season. 
and he's still getting chucked from pillar to post at their club. The management of players has been awful. And I, I am tempted to do an episode at the end, as well as our five years in the future, where I take charge of TNS and see what they could have done. Because so I'm sure it will infuriate me. But for now, TNS have got a big European tie to look forward to, and we've strengthened them slightly for it. A bit of a bizarre deal, but let me know why you think that may have happened. It seems an odd one to me. But why on earth would they take someone back who's been transfer listed by them? Or is it just because we've improved his reputation by being a bigger club? I don't know. With that all done though, let's get into the games. We've got Colwyn Bay as the warm-up, a chance to see some of our younger stars in action, get our reserve three points on the board. We still only dropped the two points against Barry right at the start of the season. We've had a completely perfect record there since, and after last year with a defeat to Cardiff Met Uni, we might have a chance to go invincible again. Getting the attendances, Colwyn Bay now have been in Europe consistently for four or five years. Not even 600 people coming through the gate, it's so infuriating. Looking at the Conference League, if Colwyn Bay can overtake Cardiff Met Uni and get into Europe via the playoffs, Carmarthen are up there as well. And one of the things that I said I thought might have held us back for a little while is the fact that there was an amateur side getting into Europe regularly. Next year could be the first time in Wales there's five professional clubs there. That could make a huge difference, albeit we won't be managing one of them. But if you guys take over, it certainly might help you out in the save. Let's go and get through our team selection note. We need to pick the reserves for this game. And here we go. A bit like the last episode, actually. The only first team we're playing is Reddy. And that's because he's got a light match load. All the others medium. So we've chucked him in for this one. We've got the mix of first teamers and youth players and reserves on the bench. So we should be able to give a few an opportunity. Again, the likes of Pope, we've not been able to loan out. Even Josh Ridd we tried. It's really bizarre that some players, just as soon as they play for us, their reputation is too high to go elsewhere. Or their ego, perhaps, is the thing that needs damaging more. But the 11 that we picked for this game is a Gostin goal. Nenov and Trant are the fullbacks with Odell and Leon back in at centre half. Chapman, Reddy, Gomez, Garcia, and Davis, the midfield diamond, with Goulding and Waters up front. I was thinking, I was umming and ahhing about putting Goulding into the Champions League team, and then he's gone on his worst run of the season. So five games, no goals, and an awful rating. We need him to bounce back tonight, and then maybe he gets an opportunity. The last time we played a team similar to this, we got beaten in the SBFL Trust Trophy by a reserve side. So Colwyn Bay will certainly be no mugs. We need to be at our best. Let's see if we can achieve. Let's see if we can get people fitness and hopefully get a good result with it too. Well, it's 10 changes from the last game. Only Gomez Garcia keeps his place. We're going to tell the lads we expect them to win comfortably. It's an okay Colwyn Bay side. I mean, David Johnson is still up top. He's their star man. But the rest of the team hasn't really improved and come along at the same level. I have got Edwards in centre mid who they signed on a free agent deal in the summer. Not a bad player, but no real sign of big progress this year. Probably the worst year they've had Colwyn Bay, both in Europe and in terms of their improvement. We need them to get up to fifth in the league though, so we wouldn't begrudge them a result today. We want them to have to earn it though, as Johnson goes on the end of a long goal kick. Flicks it on for Mishali. He goes down the right hand side, taking on Tranter. Falls back to Lance. He's got men on halfway, goes back to his centre half, who hits a long ball up to Yaboa. Leon wins it for Reddy, but Spence is there first. Already losing the second balls, which isn't a good sign. Hawkins over the top, Leon heads away, Reddy will get there. Back to Nenov. And he bring the ball forward, just goes long towards Goulding. Got Walters in the middle, instead goes back to Geffen Davis. Goulding running off him, the ball's intercepted. Second time lucky it's in, no. It's a great save from Aaron Johnson to tip it wide. Remains goalless, but that was the first big chance. Davis will take the corner though, it should be an in-swinger. To the back post, Johnson heads away. And Gomez Garcia is going to get there. Recycles it on the left-hand side. But can he create something from it? Finds Chapman. Back to Odell. Looks like the move that's going to peter out. And it does. As Agost takes a short goal kick to lay on. Highlights galore early doors. And we're trying to create some good chances. As Nenov gives it back to lay on. Was injured for that SPFL Trust Trophy game. So the only one here that probably doesn't have something to prove. Goes long down the left towards Walters. The keeper comes. Caught in no man's land. Walters gets there. Into the box he's brought down. And it's going to be a penalty kick. I'm going to give it to Lloyd Goulding for this game. Just because he scored one out of two this year. But I want him back in form. And normally, if you give a penalty to someone who's not in form, it's a disaster. Let's see if today he can refine his form. Goulding sends the keeper the wrong way. It's 1-0 Bangor City. It's a brilliant start. And now we need to get three or four. Let's really build the confidence. As we've got a free kick 25 yards out on the right-hand side into Hector Leon. 
Johnson gets a hand on it, doesn't stop it going goalwards, but does slow it down, and it's cleared off the line for a throw-in. Three bookings already for Colwyn Bay. Strikes you as the sort of game where there might be a red card, but overall, we've been the better side. Not utterly dominant, we've played very well. It's a goal kick for Colwyn Bay here. Chance to get the ball forward with 26 gone. Long ball from Aaron Johnson up towards his namesake, I'd imagine. Mashali flicks it on. David Johnson's in. It's awful defending. And I think he's going to score here, is he? He's not. A Goss denies him with a fabulous save. That is the worst defending I've seen for a long time at this club. It's a corner kick. Outswinger from Sampo. One of those already on a booking. Gomez Garcia heads it away. And Hawkins will bring it down again. Cohen Bay certainly got a threat in this game. It's by no means over at 1-0. It's a throw on the left-hand side. Hawkins takes it to Sampo. Chapman hoofs clear. Goulden flicks on. Nobody's there. The expected goals is going up for Colwyn Bay, though. That chance went down as a clear-cut one for Johnson. Spence brings the ball down in a holding roll. Plays wide to Sampo. It goes back to Hawkins. And to be honest, going direct, they look like they've got a threat. Nenov wins one in the air this time. Finds Reddy. Long ball forward towards Goulden. Make it two. Wrap it up. Lloyd Goulden's back in form. And he's given me one hell of a decision for midweek. Do we go for Keon Bulkley, the better player, the European golden boy? Or do we go for the quick lad in behind who can run in and score? I haven't decided yet. I'm going to have to later in this game. Maybe we give Bulkley half an hour to impress. As Nenov throws in from the right to Gordon. Crosses towards Geffen Davis. He's got an assist now as well. He's starting to make me lean towards him. Lloyd Gordon having the game of his life. It's 3-0 to Bangor City. Colwyn Bay just can't handle him. As it's a free kick on halfway again, Hector Leon will take the short one to Odell. Finds Tranter, who can run into the space ahead of him. It's being closed down, so forced back to Chapman. Got men on halfway, goes back to Odell. Can we find that killer pass as Tranter picks it up on the left to Chapman? Everything's being played in front of Cohen Bay at the minute, and we've seen before, we're much more of a threat when we try and get in behind. Gomez Garcia to Odell. No idea why we're seeing all of this interchange. Maybe it's going to be one of those 30 pass moves. Davis into Lloyd Goulding on a hat trick. Shots blocked and cleared away for a throw. Almost the perfect way to go into the break. First half hat trick would have made the decision. Half time though, not an utterly dominant display. Colwyn Bay have had their chances. One clear cut one for sure. We've got ourselves a 3-0 lead. We should be comfortable. We'll leave it till the hour mark to make changes. Let's see if we can keep it up. Okay, 25 to go. No further highlights. I was kind of hoping that this game would be wrapped up by now and that Gordon would have got a hat trick so I could take him off. As it is, we are going to take off both of the centre midfielders who I feel will have an involvement in midweek. On for them will be Nathan Roberts with Geffen Davis dropping into the diamond and Tom Jones continuing to increase his league appearance record. And then up front, do I take Gordon off on a hat trick? I'm going to because we need him in midweek. Hope comes on. No other club wants him, so we might as well give him a game. Now let's see if we can wrap this up comfortably. I wouldn't mind if there were no more highlights. I'd rather that than a Colwyn Bay corner, which is headed just over the bar from a free header. Again, really poor defending. We've not been at our best defensively all season. It's been a bizarre one for first team and backups. We're 10 to go. It's 3-0. We're going to get the win. We can't ask for more. Cardiff Met Uni not getting points either, so Colwyn Bay level with them. And Carmarthen have wrapped up an automatic European spot. That is going to be telling for next season. As White puts the ball in, what a free kick that is. Save back to Edwards who scores. We mentioned him pre-match as the man who might be able to deliver a change. And Agost is beaten at the near post. 3-1, the clean sheet's gone yet again. But it's a good warm-up for midweek and Inter. We'll be back in three days' time to the Racecourse Stadium as we host Inter Milan, replaced in the Champions League last day. It's a slim chance, but it's not over. Fitness test time. Kyo Bulkley is fit. We've had a news item to say for the first time we're expecting to sell out the race course. And just as I was edging towards picking Lloyd Goulding, Ian Bulkley, trainer of the week, now really improving too. So I do not know which way to go. We've got some selection dilemmas as Rafe try and hold on to their lead at Paris Saint-Germain. We've got a very different challenge. A big comeback needed, a special night needed. We've got a sold out crowd. The maximum capacity available is there. How many of them will be backing us, I don't know. Let me go and sort this 11 out, make some big decisions. We'll talk ourselves through it in a second. Right, decision made. We're going old guard. Everything apart from centre midfield where Reddy's going to start is the old-fashioned way. Lloyd Gordon is going to be the centre forward. We're also going for the likes of Tom Jones on the bench. 
We are trying to get that old school, unbeatable feeling back. And we just have to hope that it leads to a perfect performance. We've got Simancas between the sticks. Simmons and Fletcher the fullbacks with Jennings and Briones at centre half. Mabarak Whelan, Ruben Reyes, Marcus Reddy and Kyo Bulkley, the midfield diamond. With Lloyd Goulding in alongside Bojan Kavara up top. This needs to be a big one. With 3-1 down after the first leg in the San Siro, we have to win by two clear goals and not concede. If we concede one, it's extra time. If we concede two, we need to win by three. Let's go and get into it, see if we can produce the miracle. Nine changes from the weekend game then, just Reddy and Gordon keeping their places. It might turn out to be a stupid decision, but look at it the other way. We've got the likes of Gomez Garcia and Kian Bulkley sitting on the bench if we need them. We couldn't ask for much stronger than that, could we? Into the first half we go. We're going to stick with a balanced mentality initially. We don't want to concede goals early. If we can get on top, fingers crossed we can get the early goal as Romero gets it on the left. We know this side very well from Inter. They're a team that have done brilliantly against us in the first leg. They've caused problems all year. They're one of the best sides in Europe. They've also got Preuer back, the right back, who is just about the best one in the world. Goes back into his centre half, Brignoni. Time on the ball. Goes wide. We can't get there first. We're second to everything. Betanzana, Brignoni, switches the play. Ramos has time on it. Through ball to Romero. Not like this. Chooses to pass instead, which suits us. Vigio crosses though to the back post. Isela keeps it in. He's got support from the fullback, Proya. Delivers into Ramos. Just over the bar. A warning sign very early for Bangor City. Looks like it's going to be another difficult night. The wing back's causing us all sorts of chaos. And we've not really had a kick in this game yet. Only 20 minutes gone, but I'm watching the game and I'm not liking what I've seen. We've demanded more. We're going positive and we're going to try and get on the front foot. But Inter just look too good. The back three is generally the tactic we've struggled with the most as Kaya Bulkley puts a corner in. A pretty poor one in truth. Goes out to Simmons on the right hand side. Finds Kaya Bulkley again. Give us the goal. Reyes ready. Block to Fletcher. Kellen Fletcher does not score many goals. But they generally look like that when he does. What a finish. The keeper had no chance, even though it was his near post. It's 1-0 Bangor City. And this tie is very much on. If we can get a second and not concede, we're through to the quarter final. But at half time, it does remain 1-0 to Bangor City. Inter Milan have had chances. We saw one of them on camera. We're going to encourage the lads to try and get those anxious players off it. And it is the key ones. Your Simmons, Whelan, Bulkley. Players you would expect to make a difference. As Kavara gives it to Reddy just in the second minute of the second half. Fletcher gets down the left. There's three in the middle. Lloyd Gordon's got it. Kyo Bulkley. There you go. 2-0 on the night. As it stands, we're going through. Lloyd Gordon sets up the goal. And to be honest, ironically, it was the thing we would expect Kian Bulkley to be best at. Ball coming into the box, holding it up back to goal and laying in one of his fellow players. Kyo Bulkley delivers on the big stage again as it's into Bojan Kavara. I think the flag's gone up. It didn't look off to me. Let me hope this is the rare one where it's called back and, and reinstated. No, it's called back for offside. Unfortunately, it won't be dreamland yet. But as it stands... We're going through, and this is just about the best we could have hoped for. As Kavara gets it to Kaio Bulkley, we're completely dominating now. You can see the shift in momentum and confidence. Fletcher marauding down the left. He's been involved in everything. Gets it back to Reddy. Oh, the flag's up again. Keeper saves the first one. Gordon taps in. We've already had one for the first time in 20 years this season. We're not going to get another now, are we? Two offsides in a row. Otherwise, it could have been four and we could have been in celebration mode already. But what a performance these boys are putting in. Since we've got on the front foot and really tried to push in the back, we've looked phenomenal. Leon Simmons puts a through ball there. Not quite found its target. Goes through to Vigna in goal. Now, what we've got to avoid is conceding something stupid. Jennings tries to do that by winning a big header. Finds Reyes to Reddy. Got an overlap from Fletcher on the left again. He has just been constantly marauding down there. He has been utterly phenomenal. It's into Kaya Bulkley. Block to Kavara. Even the text is broken for the goal celebration. Because they cannot believe what's going on. Again the delivery comes from Kellen Fletcher. Again the composure comes from Kaya Bulkley. And Bojan Kavara scores the third on the night. Now if we concede this extra time. 
but I'd like to avoid that. Don't sit back. Don't do something stupid now. Jennings has flown into a tackle and not made it. Proyer's overlapping on the right-hand side. Whelan goes out to him. Reddy brings him down. Gets the ball. Falls for Proyer, though. Into Romero. Heads it comfortably wide. Just starting to see some of the legs tire now. And I don't know whether to stick or twist. I'm going to take off Reddy. I'll replace him with Gomez Garcia. Two reasons. One, no real change in quality. Two, Gomez Garcia, good defensively, really good engine, gets around the pitch well. And three, I don't trust any of the others to do it yet. We will take Goulding off in a minute as well. He's going to be replaced by Kian Bulkley. And I'll save the last one because at the moment, if we don't concede, we're through to the Champions League quarterfinals. And it would be a historic moment in the final season. None of us expected this. Ruben Reyes, back to Simancas. Long ball forward. Rignoni heads away. There's nobody there. Betanzana to Proya. This is heartache. It's utterly awful to watch. Izella's in. Not like this. Great challenge from Jennings. <laughs> I've never agonised over watching a game so much. Betanzana puts it in. Brianna's head's clear. Please just run up and get me a fourth. Give me a calm couple of minutes. Good challenge. Izella still gets it in. Jennings heads away again. He's been a man mountain back there. Kaio Bulkley can counter now. Don't you get caught. Release the ball. Wins the free kick. Excellent work. I'm going to bring on Neno for Simmons. I know he's shorter. I know about the back post heading problems. But Simmons looks anxious. We have got two minutes of stoppage time to go. I was about to time waste, but you know my superstitions. Proya heads it away to Whelan. This goes out of play. We will be time wasting our backsides off. Through ball to Kian Bulkley. Deflects through to Kavara. We don't need to. We do not need to time waste. Bangor City 4, Inter Milan 0. It was a comedy of errors that led to it as Inter tried to get it upfield. But Bojan Kavara completes the brace. And that is the best night in Bangor City's history. A Champions League quarterfinal for the last season of the save. A fitting moment and after disappointment in the SPFL Trust Trophy. After disappointment across Wales. We have produced a monumental moment. To make it through to the last eight. Now let's go and see how TNS get on in their first leg. As we praise the lads for an unbelievable moment. Well almost the perfect end to the perfect episode. TNS very much in the tie against Olympiacos. A 3-2 defeat away from home. Let's go and see who scored their goals. Did A take get one? No he got two. That's how important he is to TNS. Olympiacos have got a tough test on their hands. Next time we come back. TNS may be through against Olympiacos to a quarter final. I really hope so. And we are going to be back for a Champions League quarter final. Whatever game's in between off camera, we'll skip it because that is a historic moment and it deserves its own episode. I don't believe that we've got it, but yes, a Champions League quarter final is what's coming next up. If you did enjoy this episode, an incredible performance against Inter Milan, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content from this series till the end of the season. It's taking a bit longer than I thought now. And you can catch up in the eye above with all the FM22 plans. Please do turn that notification bell on because we're only a couple of weeks away from the Vita. And then we are going to be going all out with the new game. We've got a job to do with Bangor City first though. We will be back tomorrow for the biggest games in our history. We'll find out who we're playing. We'll hope it's a nice tie. But there probably aren't many left at this stage. I'll see you next time to find out. Thanks for watching as always.